He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. I'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, we are the separation of the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and under these are the everlasting arms. With faith in Jesus Christ, receive the body of our brother Victor Theophilus for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O God of grace and glory, remember for you this day our brother Victor. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call you united to those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The opening hymn, Praise my soul, the King of Heaven.
Good evening to everyone and welcome to the service of thanksgiving for the late Victor Theophilus Shori. We extend welcome to those who are sharing in this service, those who are streaming the service. We welcome you also. And we extend sincere condolences to the family of our brother Vic. Do remember that we are still under COVID and the conditions are still in place that we need to wear our masks in church unless you're reading or presiding in the service. And also we need a social distance unless you belong to the same family unit. And it's three, it's four persons per pew here at St. Peter's, uh, two at the end, each end of the pew, uh, then there are two others who can be placed between them. Unless you're from the same family, please do social distance. It is important that we continue to maintain this. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, remember before you today your servant Victor Theophilus. And we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you'll receive him more and more into your joyful service. That all who serve you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Can you be seated for the first reading? Amen. Written in the Revelation to John, the 21st chapter, beginning to read at the first verse. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. Sorry, Psalm 23, Crimean Virgin.
from the book of John, chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. Where the roses never fade. I am going to that city where the streets are paved with gold, where the tree of life is blooming, and the roses never fade. Here they bloom but for a season. Soon their beauty is decayed. I am going to a city where the roses never fade. In this world we have our troubles, Satan snares we must evade, we'll be free from all temptations, where the roses never fade. Here they bloom but for a season, soon their beauty is decayed. I am going to that city where the roses never fade. Love one's gone to be with Jesus in the robes of white or red. Now I'm waiting for my coming where the roses never fade. Here they bloom but for a season, so their beauty is decayed. I am going to that city where the roses never fade.
members of our congregation here at St. Peter's, who is this individual who has died from this parish by the name of Vic Tishori, or as we call them, Vic, in a congregation where you've got two services and people who seldom move between the services, they never get to meet each other. But I had to explain to them, in most cases, Vic was this very tall, handsome man who came into the church very early for 7.30 and left quietly. He, he liked to, as I saw it, he liked to wear a shirt on the outside. And said to him, you remember the guy who sat at the back of the church, in the second half of the church, quietly on Sunday mornings, and he will quickly disappear after the Eucharist. And he will attend many of our functions, bringing some of the people, some of his neighbors, and giving them a ride to the functions and making sure that they got home safely. He was generous, he was kind. And even this year, um, even before his illness, I had the privilege to speak uh, with him. As Sometimes he will tell, us about, tell me about his, um, he's going away, he'll be back in a few months time, and the replacements and the operations which he went through in the last few years. But there was always that jolly and happy personality who met us and shared with us in this life. We thank Almighty God for his witness and for his presence here and his contribution to the church here at St. Peter's. We pray for you, the family, as you mourn the loss of a loved one. I just met his sister, to his sister, to his daughter, and to the extended family. On behalf of the family here at St. Peter's, and on my, my behalf, I extend to you sincere condolences. And we share with you words from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, the eighth chapter, the 17th verse. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people. And we, also, we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. For if we share Christ's suffering, we share his glory. Our lives have been transformed in the last few months. We've been changed into a different, uh, different personalities and we will never look at things the same. And we're forced to value people and think about people as special as we've seen a number of people whom we know of, whom we've heard about who have died or who become ill in this pandemic. But we thank Almighty God for the life which he has given to us and we thank God for the life of Vic, for his bravery as he traveled um, to London and back in recent times. We thank Almighty God for his contribution to family and contribution to friends and to church. But this entire pandemic has caused us really and truly to look at life and death, pain and suffering with different eyes. We begin to, as a people, value life even more and value what God has given to us in this life. Life is a treasure. And lives like Vic will always be treasures to us. We recognize, however, how vulnerable we are as persons. And we recognize how much we depend on each other. This big, hale, strong man who was my illness, quick illness, depended on neighbors, depended on family to see him through. And it is all as we recognize God's goodness towards us and that we depend on each other and we depend on God. And that we should treat each other with respect and love in this life as Vic. Treated, each other, treated us with that respect and love. Paul identifies the Christian journey as very special. And he identifies this journey as 
suffering but with Christ. That in this journey, with all our pains and all our frailties, and we suffer with Jesus. We identify with what Jesus, our Lord and Savior, has experienced for us. His sufferings and his death on Calvary's cross. But it also tells us about God who is glorified and who, that we glorify God and we come to experience the glory of God in this pain and suffering. Because we go through and we are challenged by pain and suffering, we know the flip side and we are able to recognize the goodness of God. And we are able to recognize what God has done for us in sending Jesus Christ into our lives and into our world. As Christ suffered and died, he's identified with, our, with us. He's identified with our plight as individuals. He has identified with our struggles and our journey. As mortal beings, we are subject to suffering. As mortal beings, we are subject to death. But the body takes us only part of the way. It takes us as part of the vehicle. It takes us part of the way. But at times, it, in, so, in so many occasions, it cannot go any further. And that's where death steps in. The body is frail. And the body is subject to death. But there's that part of man, that soul, that eternal part of, the, of an individual, which continues to be there. In our frailties, we recognize that we exp uh, we've, um, experience the ailments and the problems that cause death. But God in Christ Jesus, through his suffering and death, offers us something more, something important. He offers to us life with him. He, he moves us from this earthly pilgrimage and he gives us the opportunity to share in the wonderful life in the kingdom of God. For us, it's a journey of faith. It's being able to place our trust and our confidence in God. And for most of us, as we face the end, and we know that the end for us is inevitable. But to put our trust in God and to know that we can hold on to him and he will guide us through all that we go through. The pains and struggles of earthly life. That the things that we see as important, that they're no longer important. The important thing is serving God. He is our refuge. He's our help. He is our strength. And he, in many ways, supports us along the way. He is the one who provides for us. He's the one who opens doors for us. And he ushers us through. He's that door. As he says to us in St. John's Gospel, I am the door. I am the way and I am the truth and the life. No one cometh to the Father but except through me. And believing and trusting in God helps us to overcome the trials of this life. It helps us to overcome the frailties of this life as we place that deep confidence and awareness in God. He challenges us to live good lives and to accomplish the things that, are so, oft, that so often bring us that pleasure and support. He challenges us to follow our dreams. He challenges us to accomplish things in our life and to use our lives in a constructive manner. This evening coming to this service, as I received the program for the service, and saw this young man sitting, I think it might be a, a, this red vehicle, might be a post office vehicle or something out in the UK. He, a man, individual who followed his dream was able to accomplish things in life. But he continued to place his confidence in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And this God who challenges you and me to achieve, to make things work, and to make life work, to look for answers 
to the questions of this life and to find the solutions to the problems that we face. But above all, to place our love and our confidence in God. He requires us to open ourselves to the opportunities and present, which present themselves and to use them in a constructive manner as we grow in life. The opportunities as we meet people to embrace them. And the pandemic, although we cannot embrace and we are forced to hold back ourselves when we push out our hands or look to embrace people. As someone who said recently at a meeting, one of the things that he misses in church is being able to greet people on Sunday mornings. But yet, in all of this, we are able to treasure each other as God's gifts. That we share in the wonderful opportunity in life together. As we meet here on Sunday mornings, as we meet on our occasions, as we journey along our Christian way, that we're able to treasure each other as people made in likeness and image of God, belonging to God and belonging to each other. That we are able to see, although we suffer, with, although we suffer and we die, that we are able to identify with Jesus who suffers for us. And in suffering with him, we find something exciting and something great. We find the glory of the cross, the joy of being with Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And Jesus who said to the women and the disciples, don't touch me yet, because I'm not yet ascended to my Father and your Father. The disciples, there wasn't Christ who brought joy to the disciples as he transferred or he transformed their fears and the uncertainty into joy and hope of a new life with him. Apart the paradox that we find joy and glory in the very things that cause us pain and death. Even the loss of Victor family and loss of a father, a brother, a friend, a neighbor, but the joy of knowing that he's no longer in his pains. The joy of knowing that he has found a new place a new resting place and a new home with Jesus as Lord and Savior. The cross plunges us into the feeling of loss and distress, but it also gives us the hope of a new life and the growth which takes place in Jesus Christ our Lord. We as Christians die daily to sin, but we live daily to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God makes us whole. He makes us whole people. And he gives us the incentive to continue. Despite what is happening in our lives, despite pandemic, despite pain and suffering, God gives us that new confidence in him. Life is not loss, but life is transformed in Jesus Christ. It's a gift which comes from God. And a God who blesses us with his presence and his love. Indeed, in saying farewell to father, to saying farewell to brother, in saying farewell to friend and neighbor in Vic, you're able to see the God who is there for you. The God who works, who has worked in him and through him, and a God who continues to work for us. For if we share Christ's suffering, we also share his glory. We thank Almighty God for the glory of God in Christ Jesus, manifested in the life of Vic and so many others who have passed this way, that we are called to manifest and show and reveal in our lives also the glory of God, the sanctity, and the joy of knowing God as our Lord and Savior. May our brother Victor find peace and rest in Jesus Christ, his Lord, his Savior, and our Lord and Savior. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and all the souls of faithfully departed through the mercy of God rest in peace.
we'll have the eulogy now. It's missing from the program. Theophilus Shuri, mother Gertrude Shuri. They had five children, Dermot, Dixon, Carol, Lucille, and Joyce. They also had other brothers, Malcolm, Edmund, and Elmer. Vic was the youngest born to my grandparents. Vic was the last of the brothers to arrive in England around the mid-60s. Um, he, he lived with us in Ilford uh, until he eventually got married and he moved on. Um, Vic found a lot of, a lot of happiness with his daughter Mel. Mel has four grandchildren for him. They are Kendra, Darson, Marcel, Malaya, great grands, Aurelia, Raven Rose, Amelia J. Vic was a postman in England for nearly 41 years. Everybody knew Vic. Six or five, big black postman, hard to miss, but well respected. Everybody that knew him loved him. Just before Vic retired, he started to build his house. And obviously when he finished, he moved back to Barbados. One of the things Vic loved to do was shopping. He could get a price of anything, so what was the cheapest? His next big thing was US politics, and he hated Donald Trump. I could go on for ages about Vic, um, but all I'd like to say on behalf of all the Ben family, Uncle Vic, we love you and we miss you. Now I'm going to, um, so this is, this is, this is a, let, uh, a little note from uh, Vic's um, oldest granddaughter, Kendra. Um, I'm so grateful for the many memories that I have of you from the moment you came into our lives and brought us so much joy. We, we always look forward to seeing you and listen to your stories and love to hear, hear them as they have us laughing hysterically. Then your big booming laugh, and I still hear you, I can still see your face now and listen to us before roaring with laughter. That laugh is my favorite memory of you. I wish I could hear it again, but just thinking of it makes me smile. I am so sorry that my girls didn't get to know you properly, but I will make sure they know, that they know all about you. Uh, you have a massive, ho you have left a massive hole in mine and my brothers and sisters' lives, and, and we're, we're completely irreplaceable and we will miss you and love you always. Now I've got people that I need to thank. Um, Sheila and Beresford, Mortley, Ronya, Merlene, Lynn, Clive, and a massive gratitude from our family goes to um, Omar Duglin. This, this guy is an unsung hero. What he's done for my uncle is unbelievable. He's, he's been like a son to my uncle, and from the bottom of my heart, I thank him. Also, I'd just like to thank my cousin, Mel, who's been over here organizing everything, backwards and forwards to the UK and all that. I'd like to thank her as well for everything she's done. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have the offertory hymn, when peace like a river and joined the singing of this hymn, a collection is taken for the ongoing work of the church here at St. Peter's. When peace like a river.
give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saying, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. You are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal form of the earth, and to earth shall return. For so did the ordain when the creator be saying, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom. Let us commend our brother Victor to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Victor, our sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond. Let him be rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations. With the Father, the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Into your hands, O merciful Saviour, we commend your servant Victor. Acknowledge me humbly, we see you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, that light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest. In peace. Amen. The committal will follow in church after the hymn to God be the glory.
To everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I'll never turn away anyone who believes in me, who raised Jesus from the dead, will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Hence, so says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of the deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live like a ploy blossoms and then withers, like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but you, Lord, who just be angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know, the secrets of our hearts, to your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and alas, oh, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Victor, and we commit his body to the, to the ground, earth to earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and, to, and uh, in your favor, which you will your well beloved Son to come again in judgment. Both this our brother Victor and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, of whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and in felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who having finished their course in the faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we all who die in the true faith of your holy name have perfect fulfillment and bliss your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in joyful expectation of eternal life to those they love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long for struggle of life. Until the shades lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hush, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light effectual shine upon him. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful be departed for the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. <laughs>
Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Into paradise may the angels lead him, and his coming may the martyrs receive him, and bring him into the holy city, Jerusalem. You good?
hymns are listed where we all get to heaven.
future we meet again. By His comfort, guide us for you. Let it be for you. God, we wait you till we meet again. God, be with you till we meet again. Leave this wing protection on you. Let the manifest provide you. God, be with you till we meet again.
service to the church. Let your show it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heir of salvation, fortress of God, born of his spirit, what in his blood. This is my soul. Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praise is my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Legend of Christ.
just a prayer away. All you need to do is call. He will hear your faintest cry. He's concerned about you. So while your tears are flowing through, your time of mourning, He is here to lift your heavy heart. Cause He's in love with you. Oh, oh, oh. 